Monday morning, back to a life of sin, story of our life, 100.9, the Creek Real Music, Real Radio, Creekside Mornings with Tony and Charles. I don't like the sin on the weekends. So. Mm. <laughs> Save it for Monday. Monday is a different day. It is Monday morning. Yep. That means it's time to talk some hockey yeah, with man. Alex Von Coyle. Uh-huh. Alex Von Coyle, the voice. From Alex Von Coyle, the voice. Voice. From Alex Von Coyle, the voice. Wait, voice. 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 Alex Von Coyle. My fighters. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we say yeah. too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's how we look at it too. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex, Alex everyone's having an the same reaction for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> how are you, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Yeah, me too. Uh, let's talk some. Uh, let's talk some hockey from this weekend. Friday let's night. What a great game, man! Yeah, unbelievable. Straight up, what a great game. Yep, it was our best crowd of the season um, by a pretty good bit. Good, and, and we give we gave them the reward that they deserved. I mean, they were yes. just. That crowd, that atmosphere was just unbelievable on Friday night, and um, that third or that second period uh, swing in momentum, and where I think we scored three goals in less than five minutes, mm. and had a fight. Like, oh yeah, you can't ask for much more. Than no, that. it was an exciting five minutes right there. <laughs> Offense yep. and a good, a good knockdown. Yeah, it was, and that, that's a good team. Pensacola is a very good team this year. I, I'd put them up there with uh, you know Evansville and Fayetteville as the best or the most improved teams in our league this season. And their uh, their goalie. I had heard was an NHL draft pick. Yeah, uh, 2015 San Jose Sharks, Jake Kupski. Yeah, he was uh, he was a tough goalie. So to put three in on him was a nice night Friday night. Yep, it definitely was. And he was he was hot. He was red hot. I mean, yeah. we couldn't solve him at all in the first period, despite I thought playing some pretty good hockey. And then for the first half of the second period, nothing. And then all of a sudden, just like that, five minutes we score three times. Hockey's like that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Saturday night because it was a home and home. Uh, over the weekend, Saturday mm-hmm. night, uh, the team played in Pensacola, yeah. uh, which is a tough rink to play in. Yes. By the way, let me introduce our uh, our guest you brought with us. Yeah, uh, yes, we totally haven't done to have that. Yeah. Stephen yeah, Pirog. Hey, hey uh, guys, how's it going? Team captain for the Mayhem. Thanks for being here this morning. Glad to have you on. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're going to get into your backstory, your likes, your fears, your hopes, your dreams <laughs> in just a little bit. Yeah. But is Pensacola a tough room to play in? Uh, absolutely. Um, that rink, it's it's for, they have a very good crowd. Um, they are, I, they're, I'm pretty sure they're nine one and one there. Mm. So mm. when we were going in there, they knew we knew how good they were on the road or at home, and we've been struggling on the road. So going in that game, especially after the travel from last night and playing and the excitement from that game before, we had all the momentum coming in, and it was a hard game. We we fought, we battled back, and obviously we lost in overtime, but. It's a tough place to play. Still picked up that point. point. Yes, exactly. That's important. Three out of four against that against that type of a team, and especially where we're at, we looked at as a as a plus for the weekend. Oh yeah. Final score Saturday night was uh, two one. Two one. Yeah. So to keep it to one one in regulation is. Yeah, that's that. Ring the bell on that. Scored a late goal to force overtime, so that you know again kind of showed the the resolve that this team has, and not to mention all the players that we were missing. You know, Sumalitis had the flu on Friday night and didn't even play. And then it sounds like he wasn't quite back up to 100% when he played when on he Saturday. When he went out there on Saturday. Yeah, obviously with Cam and Caesar still out and Soper still in the ECHL, we were missing a lot of our leaders. And uh, the fight that the team put up this past weekend was definitely commendable. It was phenomenal. It was yeah. a great game Friday night. We had a blast. Um, let's talk about this weekend. Friday night, uh, we have two games against Fayette, uh, Fayetteville Marksman. Yeah. Uh, Friday night, puck drop 7.30. It is 90s night. Yes, Are sir. you wearing your uh, <laughs> hammer pants, Alex? Mm. <laughs> Come on. I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a denim suit or anything like that. Mm. Uh, I know. The Canadian I, tuxedo I, I is what you call You know, Al's been recommending that I go over to uh, you know Goodwill and get some. They've shoes, got them so. more than likely. Yeah. You know, I would say yeah. travel mm-hmm. over there. Like get a you matching tracksuit, something right. like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Something in purples. Yeah, purple think, would be a Alex, great it would bring color. Out your eyes. Purple. Yeah. Uh huh. That'd be cool. But give me a preview. Yeah. Give me a preview of uh, Fayetteville. Well, they're, um, like I was saying earlier, a very much improved team from last season. Um, I think they're tied for second in our league right now. Uh, they've got a you know, really good power play. Uh, their coach won a championship in Huntsville a few years ago before he was an assistant there, and he got the head coaching job in Fayetteville after that. Um, so, you know, always a very dangerous team. Uh, they work really hard. And it's going to be a challenge both nights. We haven't been able to beat them yet this season, so definitely a chip on our shoulder going in. Not a bad thing to no, have no. as you're going into these two mm-hmm. games. Saturday night is uh, is Marvel night. Yes. Yes, now, it is. I've seen the Marvel jersey. I get a sneak peek at it. Nice. 
Have you seen it yet? No, Steven? I have not. Oh, <laughs> are you a Marvel fan? I am a huge. Apparently, Marvel. it's you're really, so gonna love this. Yeah. Apparently, it's really, really nice. Steven. Oh, you're Very so good. gonna love this. I'm excited. Are they as good as the Peanuts jerseys? Yes, really. Yes, that's what he, he came and talking mad smack about they that are. about that Peanuts jersey, like that's, how cool it was. If nice. if they went with the one that mm-hmm. they showed me they were gonna go with, yeah, it's as good. It's as good. He actually wants one. Alex, is there a way we can get Tony one of those jerseys? You Just, can, you can bid on him. Uh, he don't. No, we ain't. No. Well, thank you. No. <laughs> we weren't going to talk about that, though. Sucker punch <laughs> Charles Olson in the back of the head and take his. I can do that, too. I can do that, too. Shut up. Speaking of uh, where I learned my fighting skills, Stephen Pierog is here. Good morning, yeah. Stephen. Good morning. Good to have you. Yes, thank you, yeah, man. Tell me about you. Where are you from? I'm from Guelph, Ontario. All right, so uh, I'm going to guess you started playing hockey sometime around the age of three. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be a trend. <laughs> okay. okay. Actually, to be honest, I actually started when I was six. Oh, um, really? Late I bloomer. I wasn't a good skater. I actually hated hockey when I was a kid. Wow. Are you kidding? How could you be a Canada and hate the it, state sport? Uh, my brother was way better than I Ah, than okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So okay. There a little was. intimidation from the brother. I got you. Yeah, I eventually kind of just grew up with it at a backyard rink, and over the years, I slowly got the skates on. My dad kind of forced it upon me and then one year I kind of just blew up with it I was the worst player on my house league team and by the end of the year I was the best and then slowly moved up and then began began to love it hold on I don't want to gloss over something you said did you say you had a backyard God, ring? come on now. We are late. Because that's what I was going to say. Like, a ba- like, I got a basketball court in the back of my house. You had a rink yeah. back there? That's like having a pool in Florida. Dude. Uh, those, Seriously, those you exist. had a backyard rink? Yeah, my, my dad would go out there at 3 in the morning every night and water the rink. He had wow. like three-foot boards. He spoiled us when we were kids. So I was, on the, I was born... In the backyard rink, so oh. it's kind right. of, I was kind of made for this. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna ding the bell on that. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Let Thank your you. dad know that he got a bell ding on yeah, that. Yeah, he one, does. Man. Wow, that's really strong. So tell me about uh, tell me about your uh, your high school college playing through that. Um, yeah, I got when I was uh, 15, I got drafted into a league called the OHL. Uh, I had to move when I was 16. Actually, I was 17 when I first made the team. I had to move from away from home, a place called Peterborough. I got drafted there. I played there for two and a half years. I uh, went to school there. went to high school. So I tr- transferred back from Guelph to Peterborough for high school. So I kind of went to two high schools in one year at the same time. Wow. So wow. The right, transition. Right, hold on. Pause, 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 pause. I don't want to go we, we got more either. questions. Yeah, yeah. You got drafted to play hockey while you were in high school. So you had to change high schools to finish out where you were drafted playing hockey. Exactly. Wow. So, and I guess that makes prom difficult. Uh, <laughs> never went to prom. Yeah, I didn't. Wow. I was, bro. I was always had a game, busy. man. Come on. What are, you, what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. And then I got traded from Peterborough to Guelph, um, played for my hometown and the OHL. We ended up winning in a, a championship down okay. there. So it was pretty exciting. It was probably one of the biggest moments of my life. And, um, yeah, I just grew up there and then slowly got, I went into pro hockey. Uh, tell me how you ended up in Macon because you were here for the championship team. Um, yeah, I, four or five years ago, Kevin Kerr, he was a head coach here a while ago, he just gave me a call. I was struggling in an injury when I was in Evansville when they were in the ECHL, so I came home to recover and he just gave me a call and he said I had a good opportunity here and he would give me a lot of ice time and help me rebuild and get my pro career started and I trusted him and when I got here the team was struggling a bit but we ended up making the playoffs had a good run for it in the following year we had a hell of a team and we went yeah. went the whole way so listening to him was a big part of my pro career yeah. start now you left for a while where'd you go sorry you left for a while where'd you go Greenville oh yeah I went to Greenville well actually uh, I went to Atlanta first um they were the first ECHL team to kind of give me a chance and I was back and forth with them. They kept calling me up. I kept getting called down. Guys were coming in and out of the lineup. And then uh, the coach liked me there, so I stayed for the rest of the year. And then Kevin Kerr got the job in uh, Greenville, so mm. I played there for a year. It was a great opportunity for me to experience the ECHL, how that is. And it was a great opportunity, and it was fun. But I wanted to come back here for this year. I had a lot of good options here and kind of different role playing around here like obviously I came back here and being more of a leader and I thought that would be the best opportunity for yeah. me so I came here and I will be here all year I'm not going to be taking up any call ups or anything I just want to stick it out here and see how it goes yeah. well uh, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know you're a fan favorite <laughs> and uh, whenever uh, everyone found out you were coming back there was a lot of Junior P. Rock's coming back <laughs> a lot of whispers uh, I, do, I, did, I did some kind of reveal here on this show I want to say over the off season yes I believe yeah did. probably yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, was a big deal right, man definitely so uh, glad to have yeah. you back <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you a uh, personal question as team captain 
uh, with obvious, uh, you know, obviously with the coaching change uh, at the start of the season, was that a tough transition? And, and, and how did you kind of view your role in all of that with Coach Michael stepping up from assistant? Well, it was tough because Leo Thomas was a good friend to me. He, he was my assistant coach when I was here three or four years ago. Um, he was like almost like a brother to me. So it was obviously tough seeing him leave. And he, he knows so much. He has so much knowledge about the game. And, but it was just, yeah, that's how business works, right? So yeah. when he left, um, Michael's had a lot, of, a lot of weight on his shoulders. And I just came up to him and I told him, whatever I could do to help, please do. Because yeah. I came here to be a leader and to also learn the coaching side. So I looked at it as even though it was a sad thing, but it was also a little bit of an opportunity for me to come into play and show them what I can, what I can do, what I can help out. And, Ryan is a professional at what he does, and he hands off things that he thinks I can handle, and it's been a good learning curve for me too, sure. and a good leadership role I need to bring in. So I think it was a it was a bad thing at the start, but slowly we're coming together and we're fixing it. So. Yeah, as we said off air, it really feels like the team is gelling, and I want to talk about the uh, – we just broke a, a franchise record for five straight home wins. Yeah, we had never done that before. What is um, that? Yep. Um, it was – Yeah, ring the bell for that. Let's go. Ring the bell for that. <laughs> Now you guys tied the record a few weeks ago against Birmingham when you won a, our last home game of 2019. Um, I think we had won four straight only twice previously on home ice, and uh, now that uh, we've won five, that's a franchise record. Never oh, yeah. done that before. Every win has been by a single goal, too, so we're winning the close games, which is Which huge. is good, very yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about, uh, speaking of being a, a team captain and a leader, I want to talk about your four-minute penalty on uh, Friday <laughs> well, I night. I mean, you know... <laughs> Well, we were talking off air, and I really love what you said. You said, um, you know, because it was after uh, Chamelo got boarded, yeah. who, by the way, is back now. Mm -hmm. um, he got boarded pretty, uh, pretty handily. And yeah. what was going through your mind when that happened? Um, he got smacked. Well, I always look. I always look for when I'm on the ice for like big hits or things to kind of spark the play. I it was just I just saw in the per my peripheral vision that him getting hit and his helmet came off it was a two-on-one yeah two guys wanted to finish their check and it was pretty oh, wow. high and i saw him go down and my natural reaction is to kind of just stick up and see what just to go to the pile or just go to the problem and see what's going to happen and he just looked straight in the eye and i looked him in the eye and it was just a natural reaction to, <laughs> it's about to, to go down. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much it's not it's a part of the game it's, yeah. it's something that needs yeah. to happen and if I've been in that scenario millions of times, so I've kind of been experienced with it. So it was just uh, not it was just a reaction for me to go to his aid when he needed to, and I think the the fans liked it a lot. And uh, it was kind of a galvanizing moment for the fans. <laughs> it brought everybody the together again. <laughs> As someone who was in the stands when that happened, kind of a galvanizing moment. Just going to say that. Yeah. Well, it was to be honest, it was actually kind of a bad time to do it. We were winning, kind of momentum change or two. It could go either way. Yeah, true. true so true. I took a risk there, but. <laughs> I'm glad I took the risk. Glad it worked yeah. out that way. So. Well, you kind of solicited a little bit of crowd reaction <laughs> as you're coming off the ice. Yeah, yeah, they were they were all looking at me, so I thought they. they might want <laughs> Get up, Megan! Come on! <laughs> now it was a great game Friday night, and uh, congratulations on uh, where the team's going. You know, a lot of that has to do with leadership and as uh, team captain. Got your own building. Exactly, on that. <laughs> Alex. Good to see you. You too. Yep, Don't forget think, Friday night and us. Saturday night. Friday night, 7.30, puck drop. Saturday at 7. Yeah, jersey auction after the game's yeah. over for those Get specialty Marvel jerseys. Yeah, you wouldn't tell me uh, which player is uh, possibly getting announced this He's week. He's not going to do you it. You will see it. Either. I'm not going to tell you what the jersey looks like. Uh, <laughs> it's either today or tomorrow where you'll find out. <laughs> when when I find out, you find out. It goes for everyone tuned in. Fine, be that way, Alex. <laughs> Alex Von Coito, the voice. He makes us play this Alex twice, Coito. Yeah, the voice. by the way, he's yeah. giving play twice. Coito, the voice. Like, Intro and out. Voice, 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 voice. Love it, though. Alex Von Coito, my fighter, man. Here's you two and BB King on the creek.